Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Finding Aspen. Um, wow. I never know how to start these things. I just kind of like, I get a game plan and it's like, okay, so that's what I'm going to do. But then I get on it and it's like, hmm. Okay, but anyways, um, it's been an interesting couple of weeks for me since my last video that kind of gave out the details of my wedding. Well, like the things that were going to happen because it was coming up and when well, it's finally over, and oh my gosh, it was so amazing. Like, where did my little piece of paper go? Damn, fan. Um, it was so very beautiful. Like, we went out to the middle of nowhere, which this is a random suggestion for all future brides, husbands, people that are getting married. Pick a wedding location that is out of cell service. <laughs> I, I know that sounds silly, and mean kind of but it was kind of cool because because we were in the middle of no nowhere nobody had cell phone service so all their Facebook and things didn't work so it kind of forced people to kind of socialize and talk to one another and actually enjoy the environment because it was so beautiful up there we were in the middle of the forest we found the perfect place to represent the enchanted forest from once upon a time or any of those fairy tales like so beautiful and there's this place called Wedding Hill and basically it's this plains, and then it has Pikes Peak in the background, and you're surrounded by the forest. And it was just, we couldn't have picked a perfect, ve a better venue for it, just because it was so amazingly perfect. <laughs> but so, we had the wedding, everybody dressed up as a once upon a time, some kind of fairy tale. Deadpool was fucking hilarious, there's no other way to put it, he was just hilarious to have there totally fit in. Well, not really, but kind of. <laughs> it was just a blast. We, ma we made the 10 gallons of mead for this event, figuring that that would be probably enough. It was enough, but we figured we'd have enough to like give away to our bridal party and stuff. Oh no. People drink that stuff down. Like we make some damn good mead. <laughs> well, it wasn't just us. We just kind of had a little hand in it. So that's actually thanks to our friend Lissa that did that. And so very thankful because that was awesome. We had a taco bar because I love tacos. If you know me, I talk about tacos a lot. So, yes, I had to have a taco bar at my wedding because, you know, what lesbian wedding isn't complete unless you get tacos. <laughs> um, so, yeah, all of that was really amazing. Um, I've got a couple little small stories from the wedding that happened. So, when I had my dress sized, when I sized my dress and everything, like, that was, I was in the middle of performing, so my body was really toned and in fit. And since I became a stay-at-home mom, I haven't performed since I moved, so I'll admit, I've been a little lazy. And it showed when we went to go put my dress on, it was just like, too tight. And my mother and sister kept giving me shit for it. It's like, oh, girl, you better lose that. You're not going to fit. It still fit, but subconsciously it got to me I mean it's a bride on the day before her wedding you're like oh, I don't fit in my dress oh my god no so it kind of got to me just a little bit hormones whatever so I didn't eat up until after the ceremony I didn't eat I just didn't because I was scared <laughs> and <clears throat> so right up until the wedding Things, it was getting right there. Like, it was, people were walking up to the wedding hill. They were waiting on me. I was freaking out because I wasn't even in my wedding dress yet. So it's like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Um, everybody's waiting on me. I need to hurry my ass up and get ready. I was freaking out. Perfectly timed that one of our friends came and gave me a little cookie. One of those marijuana cookies that just make you feel so awesome and calm you down. Yeah, I did not hesitate. I mowed that thing down. And all was good till a couple hours after the ceremony happens we do pictures up there we come back we do pictures down here and then we let everybody eat and i get pulled aside because i'm still having to do other pictures and talk to other people so i don't actually get to eat right away it's probably another hour before i get to the taco bar by that time because i haven't eaten all day like the cookie hit me like all at once it just kind of bam guess what i'm here and I, like, almost collapsed into the taco stand. I was standing there, and I started getting really lightheaded, and it was like, I've never had a cookie affect me like this. Like, I never get affected like this. Oh, I haven't eaten all day. I'm going to fall. 
my tacos weren't even done getting created. I'm like, I gotta go sit down. I literally almost passed out in the middle of my wedding reception. Yeah. And that couldn't happen. I was not going to just collapse in the middle of the reception. So it's like, no. Haul ass, sit down. And I ate. We were good. After I got food in me. So just random little story I had to say because it was fucking hilarious. It really was. I couldn't believe I let myself do that. So make sure you eat on your wedding day, especially if you're going to have pot cookies. It's Colorado, it's legal, you know. I'm all fan and dandy, but make sure you eat first, because damn, that messed me up. Um, another little story. So after that, I get to eat my tacos. Everybody eats. We do the toast, or what was the toast? I can't remember. Night's kind of a blur. Remember, 10 gallons of meat, so I wasn't sober. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we start the dance, and eh, we did a non-traditional first dance. We didn't want to get up there and be like every other wedding out there, like, okay, let's get the married couple to get out there and to be the center of attention and dance. We didn't want to do that. So we decided to do the Cupid Shuffle instead and make everybody dance for the first dance, which was awesome because got everybody out on the dance floor because everybody knows the Cupid Shuffle and it is a fun dance. So that was our first dance for the wedding. We do that and then the next song plays and I don't really feel like dancing to that one, but I go and I'm walking around the edge and there's big spiral staircase right there, which is awesome. <laughs> But I had to kind of squeeze past that so people could dance. And because I was all happy and giddy and twirly, I did a little spin to do it. Well, the heel on my high heels caught my left big toe. And as I took a step, it took the toenail with it. Like, it literally went boop. And, oh my god, that hurt. So I'm like an hour into my wedding reception and I ripped my toenail off. But, even though it hurt like a bitch, I still got up there. They made me perform on top of that. I did perform a couple songs there. So I didn't really fucking care. Language rain. I didn't really care because I was drunk. <laughs> but, yeah. I guess the way I look at it, though, is I'd rather have some... Yes, it was my wedding day. But I would rather have something happen to me than have something happen to my guests. Because then I would feel horrible if they came to my wedding to have a good time and they hurt themselves. So, you know, it's okay that it happened to me. I'm perfectly fine. It, I'd rather have it happen to me. <laughs> I know, crazy logic. Um, got that. So, the honeymoon. The honeymoon, we're kind of putting off because we paid for everything on the wedding. Which, oh my gosh, let me tell you. Weddings are expensive. And if you plan on planning your own wedding, it's a lot of work and a lot of stress. Just FYI, future reference for those times, because it is a lot of effing work. It stressed us out. I, I, it's like a weight is off my shoulders now that the wedding is done. It's like, yes, finally, back to normal life, which I've already got a show booked and planned. So now that the wedding's over, I can start performing again. I can't wait to get back up on the stage. I miss it. I really do. I miss all my friends. So I'm going to go back down to Grand Junction, and I'm going to perform August 13th. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's the date. I don't know. You can find it on Facebook, because you know I always post that stuff. Um, but, so, we didn't really ask for wedding gifts, because we combined two houses into one. So we pretty much had everything that we could ever imagine. So we didn't really ask for wedding gifts. But some people were really sweet and nice and gave us gift cards and cash and stuff like that. So, if you remember my last video, I was kind of, I wouldn't say complaining, but I was talking about the swimming and how I can't really go into a public pool very comfortably and go swimming, that sort of thing. Well, I finally got over my fear and went swimming, although we took all the money that we got from our wedding and we bought a swimming pool. So, now I don't have to worry about it. I can go swimming any day and not have to worry about it. Puppy, be quiet. I don't care who is at the house. No barking. No. See what I have to deal with all the time? 
Just kidding. But that is so amazing because now I've been wanting to go swimming like so bad and I was so scared. Yes, it's sad that I had to go through the extreme of buying a swimming pool in order to swim, but at least now I can swim and walk around in my little bikini and be free and happy and not have to worry about any judgment eyes. People going like, oh, that trans girl, what's she doing in public? Sish. Puppy will not be quiet. You can see him. See, see this little guy back here? He's a barker. <laughs> um, so we kind of just stayed here for the week. My wife got the week off from work, so we got to actually just enjoy a week. Ah, that's my paper. Uh, being together, just the family. We didn't have to do anything with the kid. So it was hair just going all over the place. <clears throat> But, so it was a lot of fun, actually. We bought the swimming pool, so we invited people over for pool parties, had some barbecues with some friends. It was nice and relaxing. Um, one person did give us a gift card, and we went to Old Chicago, which, old, if you don't know, Old Chicago's kind of like a sports bar family type thing. I don't know. Um, so we go there and pull in the parking lot, and I was scared shitless, because I see all these, like, I don't know. I don't like to be judgeful, but redneck type people cowboys they usually don't like trans girls they're like what the? they're and they're not used to us so when the, I, I don't like those clairs i was scared but we went in anyways and waited the 30 minutes it was more like 40 minutes that we waited it took forever and finally got in there and the staff there was awesome like our waiter was so very sweet and I, I had a really good experience i really did i'm gonna Hmm. Phone's trying to mess up on me. Okay, now I think I got that fixed. If not, well then I guess it'll just shut off and we'll do this all over again. But, so yeah, Old Chicago's was actually really, and really good pizza. I've never, I've been there like once many, many, many years ago. But their pizza's really good. I know, promo. They should pay me for this. Be like, come to Old Chicago. <laughs> Um, another good experience, like, um, I've got a Walmart that's not even five minutes away. Well, with traffic, it's more than five minutes away. But that's because people are idiots and don't know how to drive and the roads are just meh. But, so I've got a Walmart up here that's where I do all my pharmacy stuff and things like that. And this Walmart right here is so very friendly. Like, they even have a trans manager, which is awesome. So every time I go in there, I feel welcomed and people are friendly. Even if customers are staring at me or things like that, it doesn't really matter. When I lived back in Grand Junction, I would go to Walmart there, and it felt like every single person in the store was glaring at me. Like, ooh, you deserve to die. I doubt that's what they were all thinking, but I, that's what you start feeling when every single person's eyes on you, and they're just like, err, and even the cashiers. They won't even talk to you. They'll just tell you your total. It's like, I just heard you have this giant conversation with this person up here. And then I come up, I ask you, how are you today? And you just completely ignore me and scan me stuff. So my wife actually called the corporate to kind of give them a thank you to tell them that this Walmart is amazing. We feel accepted. And like human beings, like everybody should be treated like anyways. It doesn't matter whether you're black, white, gay, straight, anything we are all humans there is a whole rant there about all of this stuff going on people fighting against the black lives matter black lives do matter and they do suffer a lot of things that white people do not have to face i don't have to worry generally when i have a confrontation with a cop i can talk my way out of things it's going to be calm it's going to be reasonable everything like that Black people do not have that. It's just walking into public. One of my best friends is black. I mean, you can tell the difference. People look at you differently when you're walking next to a black person than when you're walking next to a group of white people. And it is ridiculous. Like, people say racism isn't alive today, but I call complete and utter bullshit. Whether it's just feelings or something, they still... Wow. I'm going to leave that rant and tangent alone because I could go off about that. Because people need to stop. People need to stop with all the hate. Coming up with reasons. They're coming up with reasons to kill each other and hate each other. When really these reasons are just made up in their mind and what they truly believe. It doesn't make it right. Doesn't make it wrong. Doesn't. I'm leaving it alone. Anyways, yes, I spoke a little bit enough. 
Um, although that's kind of really all I've got. I was just saying that that Walmart is awesome. We called corporate, and they actually made us tell them which Walmart was bad. So hopefully we can help make a little bit of change. It's the little things like that that actually do make a difference in there. If you have experiences out there, and whether they're good or bad, if you voice your opinion, that's how things get changed. If you just sit there and bitch and rant, rant and rave about all the bad things, then yeah, okay, whatever. Make sure you acknowledge the good things. And that's why we wanted to get a hold of corporate and let them know that, hey, this store is doing awesome. We like this store. And not a lot of people do that. They only call corporate to bitch and complain like, oh my god, you messed up this up. Blah, blah, blah. So when you have good experiences and things happen to you, make sure you tell the people that did it. Make sure you let, because you might even be helping and brightening up their day. Sometimes people need that extra little bit of encouragement. All I've got out here is 128 at GameStop on here. That's all. This is kind of a random subject, but I was proud of myself. Like, I've been needing a new video game. I've been jonesing. I will admit it. It's like, damn, I need to get my adventure on. And all the games back here, it's like, eh, I've played them. It's boring. It's repetitive. I hate my fucking memory because when I do something like, I can't do it back to back to back to back. My wife's an achievement whore. She's been playing Call of Duty for like two years, trying to get every single achievement. And I admire that because she's able to sit down and do that. I can't. I need brand new adventures, things to fulfill my mind. Because like when I pick a movie, I've got 400 and some movies because all it takes is me looking at the title and then I watch the movie in my head and pow! No need for me to actually watch it because I just watched and I know everything, that, everything that's going to happen. So that's why I do like Netflix and Hulu because I don't have to buy the movies. I can just watch them on there. <laughs> but yeah, so picked out all the old video games. We kind of got together and I was like, okay, well we got like 30 games here. No, on average, two, three dollars a piece. We might have like 60, 70 dollars. I can at least get one new game. Yes, holla, we picked out the good games because I got like 128. So I was able to get my kiddo a bunch of little game things for her Disney Infinity. And then I got three games, and I'm like, yes, this is how that works, because I didn't pay a damn thing. So now I'm playing Spider-Man, because, you know, Spider-Man's awesome. And I got Transformers, because I'm a nerd. Two nerdy things. But then I also got Dying Light, a new zombie game. Well, I guess it's kind of new. I'm sure a lot of you gamers out there have played it. But I have yet to, but I love the whole zombie scenario. Obviously, I've, like, got the Final Fantasy sword there. Wouldn't that be awesome on zombies? <sighs> cut right through that. Oh, it's like really heavy. So, I mean, now that I've lost the muscle mass, I probably wouldn't use that. I would go something a little smaller, but the wild things your imagination comes up with. And I'm a Pisces and I'm a dreamer, so my imagination is always going wild. That's why the kid and I get along so well, because I am. I'm a big kid at heart. <laughs> but I think that's all I've got for today's update. I've made this long video long enough and have wasted up your time. Although, is it really a waste? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, until my next video, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.